Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be simply explaining the IBGP requirement of full mesh peerings within an autonomous system. Now, when deploying a BGP network, the definition of the protocol itself requires that all IBGP routers within an AS must be configured to have a full mesh of BGP peerings within that AS. What that means is that each IBGP router within an AS must have a BGP peering with every other IBGP router within that AS. Now, what does that look like? Well, let's take a look at these four IBGP routers within this AS. Each router must have an IBGP peering with every other router. That means that this router, for example, will advertise its routes directly to each router in the AS. This router does the same, and so does this one and this one. Also keep in mind that IBGP routers don't need to be directly connected to their neighbors. They can be several hops away, just as long as they can reach each other. That's one of the reasons why we need an IGP like OSPF or EIGRP to ensure all IBGP routers within the AS are reachable to each other. I have a detailed video about that specific requirement if you want to take a look. Now at this point, let me introduce a rule that goes along with this full mesh peering requirement. This rule is called the IBGP split horizon rule. Now it states that an IBGP router will not advertise any route it has learned from one IBGP peer to another IBGP peer. This prevents routing information from looping within the AS. And in a full mesh topology, every router, as a result, has direct knowledge of the routes from all other routers in the AS. This fact, in combination with the split horizon rule, eliminates the risk of loops because each router knows the complete topology and route availability directly from the source of each route and not via a re-advertisement from another IBGP router. So that's full mesh peering along with the split horizon rule. Now the question remains, why is BGP designed this way? There are two primary reasons for which BGP was designed like this. First of all, this gives complete visibility of the network. With a full mesh, every router in the AS knows about all the best routes available and it knows about them directly from the source of each route. This direct knowledge allows each router to make optimal routing decisions and ensures that all paths are considered in the routing process. Secondly, the full mesh requirement introduces simplicity and reliability. While setting up a full mesh can initially seem complex and resource intensive due to the number of peering sessions, it simplifies the policy implementation and network management because each router has a complete direct picture of the internal routing state of the AS. Now you may be wondering about a problem that may arise from this full mesh requirement. If you have four routers, for example, as we have seen here, we have a total of six peerings. But what happens if I have 10 routers or 100 routers and there are ASs that big on the internet? What happens then? Well, if you do have 10 routers, then you need to create 45 peerings. Now, I'm not going to draw it out here on this diagram, but take my word for it. And if you have 100 routers, you'll need to configure a whopping 4,950 peerings. And actually, the number of peerings that you will need follow this specific formula, where n is the number of routers you have in your AS. And here we can see if you plug in the number 10, we do get a result of 45. Now, you can immediately see that there is a scalability problem here that arises when we have the requirement of a full mesh peering. Now, if you've worked with OSPF, you'll already be familiar with the similar scalability problem that exists on multi-axis links that have multiple OSPF routers. This same formula is used to calculate the number of OSPF adjacencies that must be created on such a multi-axis link. Now, the problem for IBGP is even worse 
because OSPF routers are able to automatically create neighbor adjacencies, automatically elect their DR and BDR and be done with it. But IBGP peerings must be manually configured on each end of the peering. So if you do have 10 IBGP routers, you need to create 45 peerings, but that means you have to enter the appropriate commands on each end of each one of those links, which means a total of 90 configuration steps. Now, OSPF resolves this scalability problem using the DR and BDR election that I mentioned before. IBGP, however, doesn't have an automatic mechanism like that DR BDR election to resolve the issue, but it does have two separate features that can be configured to overcome the problem of full mesh peering requirement that IBGP has. These two solutions are called root reflectors and confederations. Root reflectors are somewhat similar to the DR BDR solution of OSPF. A root reflector allows certain routers within an AS, defined as clients, to peer only with the root reflector itself instead of peering with all other routers in the network. The root reflector receives routing updates from its clients and selectively redistributes these routes to other client routers, effectively centralizing route management. It can bypass the traditional IBGP split horizon rule, which prevents a router from advertising routes it's learned to other IBGP peers. By using one or more root reflectors, a network can maintain fewer BGP sessions, enhance stability and improve scalability by simplifying the overall routing architecture. Now, the other option we can use is BGP confederations. Now, a BGP confederation is a method used to divide a large AS into multiple smaller manageable ASs. It's essentially the introduction of sub ASs within an AS. This subdivision helps in reducing the complexity and improving the management of IBGP sessions by maintaining fewer BGP connections and simplifying policy enforcement. This is done by introducing this hierarchical structure of sub ASs. Inside the confederation, each sub AS runs its own IBGP domain allowing it to implement more specific routing policies internally without affecting external BGP peerings. To external BGP entities, the confederation appears as a single AS, thus preserving the routing policies and relationships on a broader scale while enhancing scalability and administrative control within the AS. Now, I will be creating a couple of videos that focus on these two specific features, one on root reflectors and another on BGP confederations to understand them more in depth. So watch out for those upcoming videos. Now, I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, please click that thumbs up button. If you'd like me to address other related topics, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe to get updates to newly published videos. I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I'd like to thank you for watching.